Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum dear students. How are you? I hope you'll be fine. This is Cambridge Prime to Mathematics Learners Book. And today we are going to start with uh, exercise 2.1, question number 5. We have already completed question number 1 till 4. And now in this one, we have uh, uh, question number 5 and onwards. Pablo counts on in quarters. So for this question, we are provided with some of the terms in the sequence and some are missing. So we have to write down, we have to uh, figure out that what would be the two missing terms. For this, let us try to draw some of the rectangles first and then we will move to this sequence. Let us first try to understand it using the figure. The first one is 1 upon 4 which is 1 quarter. 1 quarter means a shape having 4 equal parts and 1 is shaded. This is 1 upon 4. Then comes 1 upon 2. 1 upon 2 means in the same shape half of the part is shaded it means now 2 upon 4 is shaded okay since the denominator would remain the same so it would be 2 quarters that is half okay 2 quarters when simplified becomes 2 ones are 2 2 twos are 4 that is 1 upon 2 then in the third shape again one more quarter is shaded so it becomes 3 upon 4 so you see every time what is happening we are adding 1 upon 4 into the previous shape to get the next term so in the first term we had 1 upon 4 in the second one we had 1 upon 4 plus 1 upon 4 in the third one we had 1 upon 2 plus 1 upon 4 in the fourth one we had 3 upon 4 plus 1 upon 4 now when we are going to shade all four parts it becomes 1 upon whole that is 4 upon 4 is equals to 1 whole then after completing one when we are going to add one more 1 upon 4, then what will happen? We have to take one more hole and shade one part. So it would be, all four parts would be shaded in the next figures. But now we will shade more parts from the second shape. So it would be one hole 1 upon 4. Again what we did? We added one with 1 upon 4. Then one hole 1 upon 4 plus 1 upon 4 would be again one hole 2 upon 4 that is 1 whole 1 upon 2 because 2 upon 4 and 1 upon 4 are equivalent fractions. We have learned all these things in the previous grades so many times. Then 1 whole 3 upon 4 how come it is? So when we will add 1 whole 1 upon 2 with 1 upon 4 it would be 1 whole 3 upon 4. So every time what is happening we are adding 1 upon 4 into the previous term. So the next one would be simple it would be 2 complete wholes. So, the missing numbers would be 1 whole 1 upon 4 and 1 whole 3 upon 4. So, you see, we are going to write 1 whole 1 upon 4 in the first blank and 1 whole 3 upon 4 in the next blank. That's all. You see, what are we doing? Every time, since the first term was 1 upon 4 and we are adding 1 upon 4 every time into the previous term to get the next term. So here what I uh, am I going to do? I will simply add 1 upon 4 into 1 to get the next term. Okay. Sim similarly, I am going to add 1 upon 4 in 1 whole 1 upon 2 to get the next term. Let me show you how to do it. If you get uh, some problem over here, so you can find it by using this method. 1 whole 1 upon 2 plus 1 upon 4. Since we have 1 whole, so we will keep it separate and then we will add 1 upon 2 with 1 upon 4. How do we add the fractions? We simply make the denominators the same. So 2 multiplied by 2 and 1 multiplied by 2 would be 2 upon 4 plus 1 upon 4. Now since the denominators are same, we can add the numerators and it becomes 3 upon 4. So it would be 1 whole 3 upon 4. And from the figure, I have already shown you that yes, it would be 1 whole 1 upon 2 plus 1 upon 4 equals to 1 whole 3 upon uh, 4. Right? Achha. Now we have question number 6 which says, write a sequence with the steps of constant size in which the first term is 1 and the fifth term is 1.04. What are they saying now? We have to write down the sequence where the first term is given and the fifth term is given. And the sizes of all the terms should be the uh, of the constant size. That is every time we have to add the same numbers into it. So if the first term is 1, then 3 terms are missing. And the last term, that is the fifth term, is 1.04. So what is the difference between all these terms? It's just 0 0.4. 0 0.04 was added into it. So it would be very simple. If I write 1.01. .01, 
1.03 and here comes 1.04 so what are we doing in the first term it was 1 okay i didn't add anything into it in the second term it would it was plus 0 0.01 so it became 1.01 in the third one i added 0 0.01 into it so 1.01 .01 plus 0 0.01 equals to 1.02 you see so the third term would be 1.02 then 1.02 plus 0 0.01 equals to 1.03 and the last term is already given as 1.04 so it's very simple you just need to figure out that what is the difference between these two terms and then you have to divide it by 4 so you can simply find it like this 1.04 minus 1 what is it when you will subtract them you will get 0 0.04 and then divide 0 0.04 by 4 because we have four terms in between so when we will divide it what are we going to get 0 0.04 divided by 4 four zeros are 0 here comes a point so we will put a point over here then again a zero so we will put a zero and then four ones are four so we will get 0 0.01 it means we just have to add 0 0.01 into every term so the term to term rule is add 0 0.01 simple just write it down over here this is the term to term rule and apply it so you will get all the three terms inside of it since we have four terms in between right between 1 and 1.04 we have to divide it by 4 not by 3 okay because the difference between them is of four terms not three terms now what is the tenth term so if we have to find out the tenth term what are we going to do since we have already got the first five terms now we have to work for the next five terms to get the tenth term since there is no uh, position to term rule identified so we can use the method term to term rule uh, so what are we going to do we will add 0 0.1 every time so it becomes the sixth term would be 1.05 the seventh is 1.06 eighth let me write it over here sixth seventh eighth ninth and tenth okay so the sixth is 1.05 1.06 1.07 1.08 and 1.09 so the tenth term is 1.09 that's all okay we will write 1.09 over here now question number seven is a very interesting question ollie writes a number sequence starting at 15 and counting back in steps of 0 0.4 as you can see over here what is she doing she is subtracting 0 0.4 in the previous term to get the next term 15 minus 0 0.4 is 14.6 you can do it over here 15.0 minus 0 0.4 always remember when we divide when we subtract a whole number from a decimal number so the decimal should come below decimal otherwise your answer would be wrong now we will take carry from here and we will have 10 minus 4 equals to 6 so it would be 14.6 right then we, when we will subtract 14.6 with 0 0.4, we will get 14.2, then 13.8, then 13.4, then 13.0, then 12.6, 12.2, uh, and then 11.8, and so on. So what is Oli saying? Oli is saying minus 1.5, the first decimal place having 5, cannot be in my sequence, cannot be. So... Is he correct or not? Oli is correct. They are all already telling us that yes, his statement is absolutely correct. But how do you know without counting back? That is without co counting back till minus 1.5. How can you tell you? How can you tell that yes, Oli is correct in saying that minus 1.5 cannot be the part of this sequence? It's very simple, students. As you can see that we are subtracting 0 0.4 and in the table of 4 the numbers that we get are only even numbers odd number cannot come in the table of 4 and since 0 0.4 is the first decimal place where 4 is the first decimal place so we cannot get any odd number in the 10th place over here it could either be 0 15.0 0.6, 0 0.4, 0 0.8 
or point six or these three number or point four. Okay. Uh, so we can have only point zero, point two, point four, point six or point eight in place of the first decimal place in the tenth place. Apart from that, we cannot get any other number. So yes, Oli is absolutely correct. So you just have to write down the statement in your own words. Then we have question number eight, which says Hassan counts back in steps of two upon two upon five. Counts back means subtracting two upon five, starting at zero. Zero minus two upon five is minus two upon five. Minus two upon five minus two upon five would be minus four upon five. Okay, now let me tell you one thing over here. It's not that easy that it seems to be. When we subtract any number from zero, we get the same number. So zero minus two upon five would be minus two upon five. That's correct. Okay, there is no signs behind that. But when we subtract minus two upon five from minus two upon five, that is when we will subtract two upon five from minus two upon five, since both of them are now negative, so we are going to add them. We are not going to subtract them. And since the denominators are the same, so we will add the numerators and become it becomes minus two upon uh, minus two minus two upon five. That is minus four upon five. So the next number would be minus four upon five. Then what are we going to do? Again, we are going to repeat the process. Minus four upon five, minus two upon five. Every time we have to subtract the previous number, previous term with two upon five. So every time we are going to get the answer in negative form. Now it would be minus four minus two is minus six upon five. Then minus six upon five, minus two upon five would be minus. Eight upon five. Then minus eight upon five minus two upon five would be minus ten upon five. Now you can simplify them, so it becomes five ones are five, five twos are ten, and the answer would be minus two. Then minus ten upon five minus two upon five would be minus twelve upon five. So you see what is happening? The negative number seems to be getting increased. They are saying. He counts zero minus two upon five minus four upon five minus six upon five minus eight upon five minus ten upon five minus twelve upon five and so on. Which e which of these numbers should Hassan say? Acha, he is counts zero minus two upon five four upon five minus one whole one upon five. Then are these numbers going to be there in the sequence or not? Let's try to find it out. So let us write down the terms along with the position. The first one is zero. Second one is minus two upon five. Third one is minus four upon five. Fourth one is minus six upon five. Until and unless we had proper fractions, we will write down the numbers in the mixed number form, not in the improper fraction. That is, we are not going to write down the uh, numerator greater than the denominator. Instead, we are going to convert it to the mixed number. So five ones are five, and one upon five would be the answer. Minus one whole one upon five. Then comes five ones are five, three upon five. Then comes, acha five ones are five, five twos are ten, so it would be minus two. Let's go on. The seventh term would be minus twelve upon five. That is minus two whole two upon five. The next one is minus fourteen upon five, which is minus two whole four upon five. Okay. The next term would be minus sixteen upon five. Now comes three five threes are fifteen, so it would be minus three whole one upon five. So what do we have to check? We have to check that which of these numbers should Hassan say minus one whole four upon five? Do we have minus one whole four upon five? No, we do not have minus one whole one four upon five. Instead, we have minus one whole one upon five or minus one whole three upon five, and then we have minus two. We do not have any other number with minus one whole. Then minus two, yes, we do have minus two over here. Then minus three, no, we do not have minus three because in between minus two whole four upon five, then we the next number is minus three whole one upon five, but we do not have minus three in between. Then minus three whole three upon five, yes, it will come along because the tenth term would be minus eighteen upon five. Five threes are fifteen, and then three is the remainder. So yes, minus three whole three upon five would be there. Hassan will call it, and then minus four. Let's check. Do we have minus four? So the eleventh term would be minus twenty upon five. Five ones are five. Five fours are twenty. So it is minus four. Okay, yes. So out of the five numbers, Hassan will call minus two, then minus three whole three upon five, and then minus four. But he is not going to say uh, minus three. He he is going to say uh, 
टू माइनस टू एंड देन माइनस थ्री होल थ्री अपॉन फाइव एंड देन माइनस फोर दीज आर द थ्री नंबर दैट हसन इज गोइंग टू से हेयर कम्स द लास्ट क्वेश्चन ऑफ दिस एक्सरसाइज ऑन पेज नंबर ट्वेंटी सिक्स क्वेश्चन नंबर नाइन समीरा काउंट्स ऑन फ्रॉम ट्वेंटी इन स्टेप्स ऑफ वन पॉइंट जीरो जीरो वन एंड द फर्स्ट नंबर शी हैज इज ट्वेंटी देन ट्वेंटी वन पॉइंट जीरो जीरो वन देन ट्वेंटी टू पॉइंट जीरो जीरो टू देन ट्वेंटी थ्री पॉइंट जीरो जीरो थ्री सो राइट द फर्स्ट नंबर समीरा सेज विच इज बिगर देन थर्टी सो लेट एस राइट डाउन ऑल द नंबर इन द सीक्वेंस एंड लेट्स फाइंड आउट दैट वॉट नंबर इज गोइंग टू बी द फर्स्ट वन इन द sequence of 30 okay so since we already have 23.003 let's work out for the next number that is 23.003 plus 1.001 would be 24.004 so the next number would be 25.005 as you can see in the sequence the unit digit and the thousandth digit that we have learned in uh, chapter number 1 okay the third digit after the decimal place are the same so if we will take 30 over here it should be 30.000 right or at least let's see uh, if we take 29 or let's take 28.008 after that we are going to get 29.9009 right this would be the last number in 20s okay then comes the next digit so we simply have to add 1.001 into 29.009 to get the first number in 30 so would it be what would it be 9 plus 1 10 1 plus 0 1 0 plus 0 0 9 plus 1 10 and here comes 30 so the number would be 30.010 wow so here when the unit digit was 1 the 1000 digit was 1 when the unit digit was 2 the 1000 digit was 2 when the unit digit was 3 the 1000 digit was 3 and when the unit digit is 10 that is it is now 10 na 9 plus 1 is 10 so the 1000 digit would also be 10 that's all so the first digit would be 30.010 you can check it for yourself as well so this would be the answer that is 30.010 this is the first number samira will say which is bigger than 30 because below 30.010 is 29.009 and it does not fall in the category of 30 So you see, students, this is how we have to solve these type of sequences. Now we have completed this exercise. Inshallah, in the next video, we are going to start with the next exercise, which is related to special numbers. Exercise two point two. Until then, take care. If you are new to my channel, channel, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and uh, do uh, share it with your friends so that uh, more students can watch the video and uh, can benefit from it. Take care. Allah Hafiz.